So, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest of honor, one of Warmington on Sea's most distinguished citizens, a man of many parts, a banker, soldier, magistrate, alderman, and secretary of the Rotary Club. A good fellow all round. Ladies and gentlemen, Alderman George Mannering. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Town Clerk, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when I was first invited to be a guest of honor tonight at the launching of Warmington on Sea's I'm Backing Britain campaign, I accepted without hesitation. After all, I have always backed Britain. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got into the habit of it in 1940. But then we all backed Britain. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the darkest hour in our history. The odds were absurdly against us. But young and old, we stood there, defiant, determined to survive, to recover, and finally, to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The news was desperate, but our spirits were always high. Kidding, Mr. Hitler, if you think we're on the run. We are the boys who will stop your Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21, but he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun. So who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler, if you think all England The massive Nazi war machine is pushing its way across Europe laying waste neutral countries with a savagery unmatched in history. When Hitler comes up against British troops, it's a different story. They fight him every inch of the way, giving as good as they get. It's a tough fight, but is Tommy Atkins downhearted? We'll say he's not. Why should he be with a leader like this? To make Tommy's task more difficult, a new menace has been added to an already brutal struggle. Hordes of parachutists descend from the sky, trained to sabotage lines of communication. And who knows, even our own shores may not long be spared this, the latest of Hitler's tricks. We all have our part to play, and every effort is being made to confuse the enemy. Every day our defenses are strengthened, and if they do come, let's give them a sharp run. <laughs> ah, going home, are they? Sir. Ah, well done, Pike. Oh, by Jove, these things are heavy. Oh, that's the sun being wet, sir. If you waited for the tide to go out, it'd have been twice as easy. Well, never mind, Pike. They'll keep out the German bullets. That's the point. Don't take so long over the next one. Well, that's not my fault, sir. I spent ten minutes picking the shrimps out of that lot. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you, Mr. Wilson. On there, please. Sir. Well, that's a, that's a reasonable field of fire, I suppose. It covers most of the high streets. Oh, yes. Yes, I think we can quite happily say that Jerry's parachutist will be as dead as mutton from Stephen Simpson's to Timothy White's. <laughs> you get a clear run down to the Pier Pavilion if that blasted woman to get out of the telephone box. Oh, uh, <laughs> that'll be Mrs. Hoskins calling her sister in Thetford. She'll only be three minutes, sir. Well, let's hope that Hitler stays his hand till Mrs. Hoskins gets the pips. Yeah. <laughs> let's hope he waits until we get a machine gun. It's the last one, sir. What do you mean, the last one? They're nowhere near high enough. Oh, well, there's no more sand, sir. No more sand? Nonsense, there's a beach full of it down there. Oh, well, the tide's in. The war's up to here. 
But right over my mum's Wellington's getting that last one. And I've thought about it. Pike, the dampness of your mum's Wellington's is of very little consequence. And the whole of Europe is writhing under the Nazi heel. No, my mum won't see it like that, will she? Well, sir, I, I suppose we could get some more sand at low tide. Time is not on our side, Wilson. Ah. We must improvise. Tell me, how much copper have we got? Copper? Yes, copper. Pennies. Uh, well, I suppose about uh, ten five-pound bags. Don't get them, Pike. Lay them out along here. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I don't think we ought to do that, you know, sir. Why not? Well, it'll cause a penny shortage in the town. Well? Well, it'll be uh, very inconvenient, sir. <laughs> Don't they know there's a war on? I don't think head office is going to like this at oh, all, Oh, Wilson, this is no time for red tape. At any moment, hordes of German parachutists may drop on us from the skies. Well, they'll be using all sorts of disguises, you know. Mm -hmm. A whole platoon of them could come dressed as nuns, set up their headquarters in that church across the road, and you'd never notice. Well, I, I think I would, sir. You see, that happens to be the Methodist chapel. <laughs> Two back, sir. Ah, well done, Pike. Well done. Uh, the cashier says, will you sign for him as though you're putting him in the vault, or shall we open an account in your name and give you an overdraft? <laughs> I'll talk to him later. See who that is, Wilson? Yes, sir. Sam, not to be disturbed. Yes. Now, here, Pike. Take this paper, lick it, and stick it in crosses on the windows. Uh, it's, uh, it's an army dispatch rider from GHQ Eastern Command, sir, and he's got a packet. Oh, poor devil. What was it, a sniper? <laughs> For you, sir. Oh, ah. Ah, this is the moment I've been waiting for. <laughs> Pip them to the post, did I? A few weeks ago, I sent a letter to GHQ asking for instructions in case of an invasion. I told them that uh, I held a commission and that I'd served in the last conflict. It was somewhere in the Orkneys, wasn't it, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I was a commissioned officer, Wilson, and I served in France during the whole of 1919. Yes, but I haven't got the war. <laughs> Ended in 1918, I thought, sir. Well, somebody had to clear up the mess. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Who were you doing the war? Mons, Glibly, Passchendaele. I was a sergeant in the RS. Yeah, yeah, never mind that now. <laughs> yes, sir. In view of the grave danger of enemy parachutists landing in the home counties, it has been decided to form a force of local volunteers to guard certain strat uh, strategic points. This force will be known as the Local Defence Volunteers. Yes, Miss King. It's Anthony Eaton, sir. In person. <laughs> it's very important. We want large numbers of such men in Great Britain who are British subjects between the ages, ages of 17 and 65. 17 and 65. The name of the new force will be the Local Defence Volunteer. This name describes its duties in three words. Here then is the opportunity for which so many of you have been waiting. Your loyal help will make and keep our country safe. Right. Let's go to it. Right, back to work, Miss King. Now, the first thing we've got to do is set up an invasion committee. Yes. Right. Yes, sir. Whatever's the matter, boy? I feel sick, sir, sticking all this paper. <laughs> now, listen to me. We three are the invasion committee. Now, the first thing to do is to appoint a properly appointed commander. A what, sir? Appoint a properly appointed commander. That's me. <laughs> all right? All right. You will be my second in command. Oh, thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you. What next? Ah, yes. Means of conveying instructions and information to the public. An information officer will be appointed. Pike, that'll be you. The information officer will be supplied with a megaphone. Oh. <laughs> ah. Hold that, Wilson. Yes, of course. All right, like that. Yeah. You'll find that in times like these, improvisation is the keynote to <laughs> success. <laughs> well done, sir. There's your megaphone, lad. <laughs> <laughs> now, your first job is to jump on your bicycle and go around the, the town delivering this message. All local defence volunteers to report to the church hall at six o'clock tonight. Try that. Oh, come here, let me show you. <laughs> All local defence volunteers to report to the church hall at six o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Well, history repeats itself, Wilson. <laughs> Times of peril always bring great men to the fore. <laughs> Wellington, Churchill. Al Jolson. Al Jolson. <laughs> There's a boy coming home on leave. There's a girl 
want him home and leave. I mean, must call for six o'clock. It's twenty past. Where is he? Oh, I could have had time for a round of golf. Do you know that? I've just bought a new. Excuse me. Excuse just me. one moment. Uh, do you mind getting back? We're waiting for the appointed commander. I am the appointed commander. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, there you are, sir. Tell me, did you uh, did you get the enrolment forms? No. Well, haven't they got any at the police station? They wouldn't let me have them without putting in an, an application form. Well, then why didn't you, sir? They haven't got any. Oh, I see. <laughs> I got those, however. Oh, but, but look here, these, these are paying in forms. Oh, sir. don't keep putting obstacles oh. in the way, Wilson. <laughs> Get the first man. All right, there, sir. Right, sir. Would you, uh, would you mind stepping this way, please? Wilson. Yes. Well, come here, come here. What's it? I intend to mold those men out there into an aggressive fighting unit. I'm going to lead them, command them, inspire them to be ruthless killers. And I'm not going to get very far if you're going to invite them to step this way, am I? <laughs> quick march is the order. Ah, there it is, sir. All right, quick march. Not much point, I'm here already. <laughs> Name, James Fraser. Occupation? I keep a philatelist shop. How do you spell that? S-H-O-P. <laughs> Thank you very much. I imagine you've not had any previous army experience. No, none at all. No, we can usually tell, can't we, Sergeant? Yes, we can, sir. Once yes. a soldier, always a soldier. Yes, of course. Uh -huh. I'm a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Petty Officer, Royal Navy. Retire. Sign there. Are you swearing? I never said a word. <laughs> <laughs> you army fact. Are me, are me taking a swearing an oath of allegiance? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, of course we are. We're going to do that later. Wait outside. Come. Boys brigade is men. <laughs> Have to watch that man, Wilson. Yes, sir, yes. Bolts you lot, these jack tiles. Yes, I've had a few. <laughs> next man. All right. All right, next man, please. All right, quick. Quick march. Yeah. All right. Halt. Uh, how do you do? How do you <laughs> Name? Uh, uh, Godfrey. Uh, Charles Godfrey. Occupation? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm retired, but I was 25 years in the civil service. Oh, really? Indian or British? Uh, uh, civil service stores. <laughs> <laughs> Any previous military experience? Well, I was several years in the sports department, of course. Uh, that meant archery uh, and air guns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no doubt your knowledge in specialist fields will be of great use to us. Would you uh, just sign up, would you? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all? For the moment. Uh, 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 don't I get a receipt or something? This is a fighting unit, not a dry cleaner's. <laughs> <laughs> Do that, would you please? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, right turn, quick march, and just veer around to the right. <laughs> Any gents? Name? My card. <laughs> Joe Walker, wholesale supplier. I suppose you won't be with us very long. You'll be called up any day, I should think. Oh, no, Gov, no, no, no. I'm, uh, what's his name? Uh, reserved occupation. How do you make that out? Well, I'm an old sole supplier, aren't I? I mean, I supply essential supplies. Any previous military experience? I've got a girlfriend in the ATS. <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. Oh, uh, by the way, any time you gents uh, require anything, you know what I mean, just uh, give us a tip, you know Thank what I mean. Thank you very much, yes. We'll oh. bear it in mind. Right. right turn, quick march. Pardon? <laughs> right turn, quick march. Well, you might wait for the ink to dry. Ace! Evening, Mr. Manring. Evening, Mr. Wilson. You know me, don't you, sir? Oh, yes, Mr. Jones, the butcher yes. from the high street, isn't it? That's right, Chuck. Don't you think Mr. Jones is perhaps a little bit too old, sir? Old? Who are you calling old? Oh, no. You give me a chance to get to those Jerry Parish units. I'll soon sort them out. <laughs> you see, Wilson, keenness that counts, yes, not age. That's <laughs> a ticket, sir. I'm as keen as mustard. Have you any previous military experience? Now you're talking. I signed on as a drummer boy in 1884. Later, I saw service in the Sudan. Fought the Fuzzy Wuzzies. Fuzzy Wuzzies, they were the boys. They come at you with a great long knife and zip you right open. <laughs> <laughs> they soon find out if you've got any guts or not. <laughs> Them Fuzzy Wuzzies, they was the only one that could break the British square. Not like those Jerry's, they couldn't break the skin off a rice pudding. <laughs> they don't like the cold steel, you see, sir. They don't like it up them, you see, sir. They don't, they don't like the... Get him a chair, <laughs> 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 They don't 
you know, that's right. That's right. Thank you, sir. That's all right. I'm not as young as I was, sir. <laughs> but that's not going to stop me being in there with the bailiff no, no, no. over the cold. No, no, no. Quite sorry, Mr. Jones. I think you've made your point. Yes, sir. Just sign that, would you? Please. Certainly, sir. Thank you, sir. When did you leave the army? 1915, sir. I was invalided out, sir. The old minces. I couldn't quite make the focus, I see, sir. Presumably, that's why you've signed the table. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Right. Thank, Thank you, sir. you, Mr. Jones. Oh, sir. Yes. There's, um... <laughs> there's a couple of pounds of steak there, sir. Compliments of the house. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, sir, uh, what about my stripe? Your stripe? <laughs> I was in Lance Court for 14 years. Can I keep it? No, Jones, I'm afraid you can't. Well, in that case, I'll keep the steak, I think. <laughs> let's, let's not be too hasty about this. <clears throat> We shall be needing NCOs, you know, Wilson. Oh, yes, of course we will, sir, yes. Yes, and I've no doubt that uh, Mr. Jones's previous military experience could stand us in very good state, st stead. stay <laughs> Yes. Right, that's all. Lance Corporal Jones. Thank you, sir. You're a gentleman. Well, TTFN, how about... Right, please, right, please, right, please, right, please. Can I do you now, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good, very funny, sir. Awfully good. <laughs> well, we'll... Uh, We'll uh, share this later, shall we? Uh... Put it out very quick. Right, who's in charge here? I am, why? Right, we'll get this all cleared out at once. What? Come on, get these blokes out of here. Are you out of your mind? Do you realise that history's taking place in there? In five minutes' time, an ARP lecture is taking place in this hall. I am trying to enrol men for the LDV, and if you're not very careful, I shall requisition this hall for military purposes. You're too late, mate. It's already been requisitioned for the civil defence for my purposes. So get this lot out, so I can carry on with my lecture. Are you asking the army to retreat? Why not? You've had plenty of practice lately. No, no, no. <laughs> stop that, stop that. Look, gents, we don't want to get excited, do we? I mean, I've got my job to do and you've got yours. If you want to carry on here in this office, well, it won't bother me. But get this other lot out, quick, sharp. Go. Lummy, pulled it in all but... Come on! <laughs> so what are you going to do, sir? We've only enrolled four so far. Well, we'll just have to dispense with the formalities. Get them all in here. All right. Yeah. Right, come, come on. At the double. Inside, all yeah. Here. All of you. Come on. Yeah. All right, round come on now. Oh. Gather round. Yeah. Quickly, please. We all in. <laughs> now, men, you've answered your country's call today. We're all here to defend our homes and our loved ones. And I know that you will not shirk that duty. We've no guns. We are naked. But we have one invaluable weapon in our army, ingenuity and improvisation. That's two. <laughs> I want you all to go to your homes, gather what weapons you can, and come back here in an hour's time. From tonight, whatever the odds, we Englishmen, we, we British, <laughs> we here are going to be able to say, come on, Jerry, we're waiting for you. Don't forget your gas mask. That's all. Dismiss. Thank you, sir. That's really very nice. You wave me goodbye. Squad, attention! Try and get it right. Try and stand at ease! Attention! <laughs> all right, sir, the men are all ready for your inspection. Very smart, Corporal. What's that supposed to be, boy? <laughs> well, you said if you had nothing else, we'd tie a carving knife to a broom handle. I didn't say keep the brush on the end of it, you stupid boy. Well, he should have said. I don't want any insubordination. Take this man's name, Sergeant. Now, what's your name, lad? Well, you should know by now. You've been a friend of my mum since before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, it doesn't happen again. <laughs> where did you get that gun? Eh? The gun, where did you get it? Well, it belongs to my friend, actually. I see. <laughs> He's got a friend. Uh, a gun. Yes, I can see that, sir, yes. Well? Yes, well. I'm the officer. Yes, sir, quite. You're the sergeant? Quite, yes, sir. We ought to have that. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to ask you for it. Well, don't you think it would have uh, more authority coming from you, sir? No. Right. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Mr. Mannering would rather like to have your rifle. Who would like to have uh, it? Captain Mannering. Well, he can't have it. Now, look here, Godfrey. Hand over that gun at once. I, I don't see why I should. Are you refusing to obey an order on active service? 
You realise we can have your shot for this? <laughs> That'll be a bit tricky since he's the only one with a gun. <laughs> Permission to speak, sir. Permission granted, Corporal. Why don't we take it in turns to have the gun, sir? <laughs> what an excellent idea. Draw up a rotor. Put my name at the top. <laughs> That's a very formidable looking weapon. Ah, a poor man without an Nangium that. <laughs> <laughs> You needn't have bothered to dress. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, it's my wife's birthday. You see, we're going out for a little dinner celebration. Uh, do you think you're going to be long? Well, that rather depends on Jerry, doesn't it? <laughs> Not that we want to interfere with your social arrangements. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Um, I would have asked you too, and we haven't really been introduced, have we? No, we haven't, have we? Well, we can soon arrange that. May I introduce Captain Mannering? I'm afraid I didn't quite catch your name. Wilson! What do you think you're doing? Oh, I don't know. I just thought he might ask me too. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's birthday today, yes. is it? You got a nice present, I suppose. Well, in all this confusion, I just haven't had time. Yeah, hang on a sec. Here, cop hold of that, will you, Taffy? Taffy. <laughs> <laughs> Anything there you fancy? I say. There you are. Look, there's a nice little thing. 15 jewels, solid 18 carats, Swiss made, waterproof, shop proof. Can't get them anywhere these days. I'll tell you what, 10 quid and it's yours. That's it. It's extraordinarily generous of you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Don't suppose I could interest you in anything, could I? Yeah. Thought not. Good then it eat. Splendid turn out, men. Splendid. If in one hour we can achieve this formidable fighting potential, think what we could do with a week's training. Now I've got some good news for you. GHQ are rushing our weapons and uniforms down here at once. Oh, that's good, sir. Maybe here any moment. Meanwhile, time is not on our side. The enemy may strike tonight. So we must learn how to deal with it. Now squat down on the floor. At the double? How can they squat at the double? Right, Dad. There you go, then. Right. Now, Son Wilson has very kindly drawn this representation of a German tank for us. And I want you to observe the following point. <laughs> Heavy armour in the front here, usually four inch plating. 40, 50 or 60 millimetre repeating cannon here. Heavy machine guns here and here. Light machine guns here, here, and here. High pressure flame thrower here in the front. And I'm told on very good authority, two hand grenade throwers. Cool. A very formidable opponent indeed. But we're going to tackle it. The question is, how? Now, how about uh, some sugar, sir? Sugar? Yes. How would you use it? Well, you stick it in the petrol tank. And the engine fizzles out. Yeah, that's right, sir. I read about yeah, that somewhere. Yeah. That's right. That sounds a very really good idea, doesn't it, you? Good indeed. Shall I put in an application for an extra sugar ration? Sir? Yes, we can try it once. If it doesn't work, we'll put the rest in our tea. Yeah. <laughs> How about some spuds? Spuds? Yes. You stuff one up the exhaust pipe, <laughs> and that fails the gases from coming out the engine, and the engine stops. Yeah, that's right. And all, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Unfortunately, Corporal, these Nazi tanks are equipped with very long, thin exhaust outlets. Well, we could use long, thin spuds. <laughs> You're not beauty, sir. King They're Edwards. Long King Edwards. Well, no, 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 what about carrot? That's not thin. Yes, yes, do that. Right. If that doesn't work, can we have some chips? Chips! <laughs> <laughs> well, now, your suggestions have stimulated a very lively discussion, but I think, for today, we'll concentrate on my methods. Now, here are the weapons. Blanket, tin of petrol, crowbar, petrol bombs, and a box of matches. Now, this is the procedure. First of all, we take cover, concealing ourselves from the tank. Here, here. <laughs> we hear the tank coming, and as it draws level, the first man soaks the blanket in petrol, breaks cover, and rushes towards the tank. Now, we're going to need a tough commando like boy for this. Y Pike, you. The second man will then light the matches, rush to the blanket, and set fire to it. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Can yes. I volunteer for that, sir? Oh, very well, Corporal. Thank you, sir. Do you think that's wise? Yes, sir. <laughs> All clear so far? Yeah. Fraser, yeah. you will prise open the lid of the tank with the crowbar. <laughs> All clear will have a bottle yeah. in each hand, which will be ignited by Corporal Jones, and they will be pushed into the aperture. Any questions? Yes, sir. What are you going to be doing? <laughs> I shall be observing from behind cover and uh, deciding whether or not to send in a second wave. <laughs> <laughs> now, you must understand that the most important part of the whole operation is the decoy. It is essential that one man draws the attention and the fire of the tank gunners 
to him and away from us. You better be the decoy. Graceful. You, you. <laughs> right, let's try it by numbers. Come and get your weapon. Right, right. decoy, over here. You work over here in this corner. That's it. There we are. Godfrey? Godfrey, you're in charge of the tank. Over at the other end of the room. There we are. Now, uh, Sergeant Wilson, Wilson, we'll blow a whistle when we're ready to go. Thanks, Doris. Can I put the petrol on my blanket now? Oh, of course not, Bob. Of course not. This is a dummy run, for heaven's sake. Right, stand by. All right. Start them off, Sergeant. Right, up you go. I, I say. Um, oh, that's no good. Look, you're just angry. Draw that fire. Go on, do it again. Um, I, I say, you, you fascist beasts. <laughs> Where's the blanket? Sorry, sir, I didn't hear him coming. Come on, in. Oh. <laughs> start again. Start, start again. Right, thank thank you. you. Come on. And this time, make a noise like a tank. All right, stand by. <laughs> I say, you fascist beasts! Thank you! I said, I'm going to call him up! I'm going to call him up! I'm going to Start again, start again. Here we are, sir. Hi, take charge of the matches this time. All right, sir? Well, I, I, I'll have the blanket, sir. All right, Corporal. All right, right sir. Right, off you go. We are going to hang out watching on the big thing we like. It's your bedtime. I can't come now, Mom. I'm up with the pain. Yes, dear, well, you'll just have to blow it up tomorrow. Oh, well, I'm surprised at you. After all, you know what time he goes to bed. Go along, Frank. Yes, go along, Frank. Go along. Mom. Will you be round later, Arthur, for your usual? Maybe. <laughs> all right, fall in for two, please. Come on. Uh, uh, Laurie, Laurie from GHQ, sir. Ah, this is it, men. Our weapons and uniforms are... Oh, oh yes, sir. Captain Mannering, sir. Yes, too long. I think I know what you've come for. Just sign there, sir. Yes. Sergeant, call the men in outside to help her load. Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary, sir. What? Here are your uniforms and your weapons. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good Lord. Pepper. Pepper? Pepper. Enemy, the throwing in the face of. <laughs> Five feet. Well, perhaps not quite what we'd expected, but... Uh... Every weapon in our armory is another nail in the enemy's coffin. Hand out the arm beds, Corporal. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Sergeant, dish out the paper. All right, there we go. All right, take one of these. Each one. Take it, sir. There you are. I take it with you wherever you go, man. If you see any parachutists, let them have it. That and the cold steel, sir. That's the spirit, Corporal. Yes, well, we're making progress. A short time ago, we were just an undisciplined mob. Now, we can deal with tanks. We can kill with our pikes. We can make them all sneeze with our pepper. <laughs> and after all, even the Hun is a very poor fighter with his head buried in a handkerchief. Yeah. Yeah. But remember, men, we have one invaluable weapon on our side. We have an unbreakable spirit to win. A bulldog tenacity that will help us to hang on while there's breath left in our bodies. You don't get that with Gestapos and jackboots. You get that by being British. So come on, Adolf. We're ready for you. Yeah!